All right, Mr. D, fall fruit tree care. What do we need to know? Well, probably one of the best things to do, you know, right now in the fall of the year is to clean up under mm -hmm. your fruit trees, uh, get rid of any uh, uh, rotten fruit or mummy, mummified fruit and leaves, uh, uh, branches that have, could possibly be infected with uh, uh, diseases or uh, uh, if you had a problem with fire blight, mm. we had a lot of fire blight yes. pressure this year with all the rain that we had. Uh, you want to get all of those leaves and everything out of the out of the, the orchard if you can, or out from under the trees, and don't put it in your your compost bin. I would get rid of it. Either have a bonfire and, <laughs> and burn it up, or if you can legally do that, or uh, bag it, double bag it, and put yeah. it in the garbage. Uh, but that's one of the best things that you can do right now. Uh, another thing that very soon you can do is start uh, thinking about applying uh, your dormant oil mm. sprays, uh, li uh, liquid lime sulfur, uh, uh, in some cases the fixed copper. Mm. Uh, these are some uh, applications that you can put out during the dormant period that will help control uh, some of the insects. You know, it's a preventative treatment for insects next year. Mm. Insects. Uh, some will overwinter as uh, eggs or even sometimes adults in bark crevices and things like that. And uh, uh, these treatments will, will help take care of, uh, of some of these problems. Uh, let me kind of go down sure. a list of what okay. some of the, the, the products do, what some of the problems that they uh, control. Uh, the dormant oil can be applied anytime the trees are dormant, when all the leaves are off, uh, November well through March. Um, uh, you definitely need to make sure you make at least one application just before bud break in the springtime though, uh, late in late winter. Uh, you need to follow the label directions on temperature restrictions. Uh, you, you, uh, temperatures, uh, if it's a real cold freeze coming, you can, that can create a problem. Okay. So you need to apply it when the temperatures uh, uh, if you, if you put it out when the temperatures are below 35 degrees, you might uh, damage the bark. Mm -hmm. um, but the dormant oil will control aphids, scales, spider mites, and uh, many other insects uh, by desiccating or smothering the eggs and larvae. Sure. So that's what your dormant oil will do. Lime sulfur is more for fungal diseases and bacterial diseases. So if you've had a problem with uh, uh, fire blight, scab, bacterial blights, and anthracnose, lime sulfur is uh, the product that you need to do. And probably two or three applications over the winter time, early in the winter, middle of the winter, and then late winter okay. uh, would, would, would be a good idea on, on lime sulfur. Any temperature requirements for the lime sulfur? Don't see anything okay. on that. Uh, fixed copper. Uh, controls canker, a fungal disease, and uh, uh, you may want to make um, a couple of applications of that if you've had a problem with canker, primarily on uh, peaches and plums in our area. Yeah. But if you don't have peaches and plum trees, then you don't have to worry about the fixed copper. Let me ask you about this though, going back to the, uh, the fixed copper and the lime sulfur. Do you do one or the other, or you do you do them both? Uh, it's best to, to do them both. Both. Okay. If, if you have peaches and plums. Now, oh. of course, the copper is only for peaches and plums. The liquid lime sulfur, that would be on all of them. Okay. Apples, pears, peaches, plums, right. nectarines. But you like wouldn't that. mix the two mm. together, would you? Or would they have to be separate applications? That's a very good question. Uh, you know, I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't mix those together. Okay, okay. I, I would see why you wouldn't want to mix them with a the dormant oil yeah. because you might affect the consistency of the dormant right. oil. But I really don't see a problem with mixing the fixed copper with uh, liquid lime sulfur. Okay. I don't see a problem with doing that. And uh, that would reduce the number of times you're out there spraying. Right, it sure about would. 50 percent. Yeah, sure would. Yeah. Uh, one thing that you see uh, a lot of fruit growers do is they'll paint the base of their tree mm -hmm. with white latex mm -hmm. paint and, and what you're trying to do is to avoid uh, freeze injury, uh, avoid on the southwest side of that plant, even any time during the winter time, if, it, if it's real cold and it thaws, the sun thaws yeah. the cambium layer or the bark 
and then it refreezes that night, it can cause that bark to split. Right. And, and mixing just white latex paint on, you know, mix it with water, cut it 50, 50 percent, one part paint, one part water, and, and then you paint the trunk and that will act as a sunscreen, you know, and basically repel the sunlight okay. and keep that from happening. And you can, uh, uh, the commercial growers I've known will put a rubber glove on and then a cotton glove and <laughs> just, just put their uh, hand in the paint and just you know, okay. go up, you know, 20, 30 inches, you know, you don't have to go all, you don't want to paint the whole tree. Sure. But uh, especially the lower part of that tree would be a good idea to do that. Okay. You know, also now is the time to be thinking about ordering uh, and replacing fruit trees. I had, I lost an apple tree this year. Uh, and, and what happened is I planted it in a little bit lower place than the other apple trees. And over time, uh, soil had washed in around oh, that apple yeah. tree. And as much as I preach against yeah. <laughs> trees too deep, yeah. that tree actually soil settled in around it. And, and I got a windstorm. I noticed the foliage was, was a lot, much lighter than the rest of my fruit trees. And we got a, a little windstorm and it just blew the tree over. How about that? And I looked at it and it was actually planted too deep. Wow. Or, or it wasn't planted too deep, but washed. soil washed in around it, and uh, and the same thing took place. So that's, that's good uh, to mention. one okay. thing you need to really be be careful with. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, but think about you know going in order. You can order them from from reputable nurseries and pick out your varieties and. Go ahead, soil test. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're going to plant any, and make sure you get the pH right. You know, the pH needs to be pretty high for, for almost all fruits except for blueberries. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, and if you're going to plant blueberries, you need to get the pH down. Right. You know, make it acid enough to burn the soles off the bottom of your shoes. <laughs> pretty much. 4.2 to, you know, 5.2 right. pH. Very low. Very low pH. All right, Mr. D. We appreciate that good information. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.